you start to get an idea now why the terminology of localization might be needed. Because in this kind of world, translation is doing a lot more than that simple model that equivalence had. Language one, language two, culture one, culture two. Two sides and a little arrow that went that way or went that way. Uh, in this world, uh, translation is involved in a lot more things and a lot more asymmetrical things. Let me move on though to what it is. And I'm trying to prove to you that it's not just translation. What's the difference between localization and translation? Uh, this is from, because I refuse to pay for software, <laughs> as far as humanly possible, I get some weird things coming up on my computer. And I think this was uh, in the days, early days of little CD players. I got this thing. Firstly, error has been occurred. I like that. It's such defective English. <laughs> and, and usually when, there's, when it's defective English, you, know, you can trace back to the source language. And I can't. Does anybody suggest we have? I'm told Hebrew might have some structure like this. It's coming through, but anyway, uh, we all learn to live with this because of the nature of the central lingua franca being used by more than its native speakers. Software is developed in this kind of English. Do we know what is meant? Of course we do. Do we complain about the translation? No, it's not worth complaining. We live with indeterminacy and all we can do is click, oh, aceptar. We can just accept. What's interesting is, of course, that the English here uh, comes from the important program I should have paid for. And Adeptar comes from the um, language of my operating system, so we actually get a bilingual text that we're dealing with. But I'm sure you all have bilingual texts of this nature, living on your computers every day. We're used to that, we never think about it. What a strange text. Do you think that that text has been produced by translation? No. It's been produced by processes of localization. This was also from my computer about 10 years ago. I think this is a, a printing menu. Okay, paper, basics, configure, good, general, details, administrador, de color, sharing, finishing, effects, despacho, commentario. My only commentary, what happened? Okay, you get these bilingual or multilingual, because my computer also, also speaks Catalan occasionally. Um, coming up, and bits of language are being drawn from different parts. Again, it's from the piece of software uh, or uh, from the, uh, the operating system. But this would be partial localization. Okay? We know there has been translation in the process, but what's the defective? And you must bear in mind that people only know translation exists when it goes wrong. Otherwise, who cares about us? Localization, localization is the same. We only know it exists when it goes wrong. And here it went a little bit wrong. So, how come? And when you start to answer those questions, how come? Because they wrote the program in this way, and they only translated part of it, you get an idea of what is involved in localization. This is my favorite, all-time favorite example of localization going wrong. I'm sure that if you use uh, Microsoft, uh, you've got something like that that you could bring up, a clock, and it's got the date and the year, 2003. I've got to renew my examples. You know, is... And um, you've got the days of the week, right? So today is uh, the 20th, the 30th of uh, D. Um, in English, you'll have N, T, W, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay? You get the letters along the top and you know what day of the week it is. Here in Catalan, I've got Domenge, Dilluns, Dimas, Dimecres, Dijous, Dilluns, 
every day of the week begins with a D. So I have no idea what day of the week it is. And what's worse is, I can never remember if the week begins on a Monday or a Sunday. So I can't sort of wing it by imagining it or translating back into English. Okay, this, this tells you what localization is. This is when it goes wrong. How did that text get there? Any ideas? It's not just machine translation, it's just people writing a rule or an algorithm. They say, in this space, because it works for all your languages, perhaps, but not for Catalan, but there are other languages, in the target language, take the first letter of each day of the week and put it in. Easily done. And everybody does that. And so in Spanish, it's fine, and French is fine, and German is fine, and I have no idea about Asian languages, but I'm sure you can manage, because you've got lovely characters which are really economical. Poor old Catalan, help! <laughs> Every day, a D day. <laughs> How would you solve that problem? Any suggestions? It's a, it's, a, okay. It's a problem that's been produced not by bad translating, but by bad rule writing. Or maybe the quality assurance guy didn't do their part. <laughs> yeah, so what? So what does he do? Or she do? So, say, change it for Catalan? There are other languages in the, in the, with the same problem, by the way. Uh, well, in the first step, you'd say no, because we're going into many, many languages, and we're not going to change the, that size of the box you know, just because Catalan's there. So Catalan, change your language. Or what everybody does, they just click down and put the computer back into Spanish and it's, it's solved. No. Because everybody, don't tell them that everybody who speaks Catalan also speaks Spanish. And, that's why we, we return to it. Um, the, the solution, if you look on your computers and you go on anything later than XP, uh, that is Vista, Windows 7, whatever, look at the, when you get your computers, don't look at it now, uh, you'll find that it has been solved in a way that is not a way you would think about in terms of translation. Can you guess the solution? Yeah. Would it be useful to put the second letter or to put the last letter? Yeah. The solution has been to allow space for two letters, not just for Catalan, but for all languages. Okay? Because of the way the software is localized, you need a bigger box to fit those two letters in. It's problematic. It's not easy to resize all the boxes if you're uh, applying rules of this kind. So it's more economical to change it at the source, to change the source text, if you like, make it bigger, allowing to, and get all languages to put in two letters. And that's the way the problem is solved. That process of changing the source is called internationalization. What does it mean? It means taking what you've got, taking out the problematic bits, or the bits that belong to uh, an American culture, if you've developed the product in the United States, get out the dollars and put in monetary unit. Okay? Uh, get out the color coding that is red, white, and blue with the American flag, that's not going to go over very well in China, and put local flag, or local color. Uh, okay, change the units of measurement, change all those sorts of things. Change it at the source, because then the translation process, which is the localization from the source, goes much faster. But the first step is preparing the source for localization, solving the problems before they appear. And that, for me, is the essential part of localization. Not the adaptation process, not going into, or not even the translation process. The essential part is 
internationalization. What is localization? These are definitions taken from LISA, the Localization Industry Standard. It's localization Industry Standards Association, now defunct, but there are other organizations, and uh, this would be a fairly commonly accepted definition. Notice it refers to a product and a market. It doesn't refer to a text and it doesn't refer to translation. It really is a way of selling a product. Translation then enters as something merely technical. You take the user visible natural language strings, a string is a sequence of words, natural language, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, French, those languages, and the ones that the user can see. All the code and the technical stuff don't touch. That's the only thing they'll tell you. Translator, don't touch the code. Just work on your little bits. Okay? And so localization is translation plus something else. Factor X. What is the X factor? Internationalization, as I mentioned. That's a big, big part of it. Adaptation does occur, but adaptation with respect to dates, time, currency, conventions. Those quite banal things that tend to appear. And that normal translators, like you and me, forget about very often. Then uh, there follows a stage of product re-engineering. You know what hotkeys are? You know hotkeys? You know? I, I, uh, in, in English, I do Control O to open a document. That's a hotkey. Okay. In Spanish, I do Control A. Abrir. They have reassigned the hotkeys. But when you do that, you have to check that A is not being used for something else in the language, and so, and, and it gets quite complicated because you have many, many hotkeys being used um, to the extent that uh, a sophisticated piece of software will not reassign hotkeys. Uh, the software I use for website development, it's always control O in all languages because it gets too messy. Anyway, that would be an example of the product engineering that's necessary. And then, because it's so complex, complicated and complex, but complex, uh, there's significant product testing to get out all the bugs. And because many people are involved, here we're talking about websites and software, basically. You've got your translators, but you've got your engineers, you've got your uh, desktop publishers, you've got your terminologists, you might have marketing people, lots of different people. Project management becomes incredibly important. So the translator has become just a part of it. That will be factor X. What's a local? Ah, localization, it's a great term because it comes from local. You localize into a local. What is a local? Well, it's not a country and it's not a language. It's a specific market sector with certain features. In your computers, you can find locales if you go into settings. I've got here the locale for Catalonia, language Catalan. That's the way the numbers are presented, that's the way the currency is presented, the time, the date, the long date. Okay, and it's in Spain, they're reminding us. That's the locale. You get those things together, that's a locale. A locale might include other things, such as an income bracket, men, women, if you're localizing specific products for a specific people. Okay. Localization adapts to local. Great word. Because without it, we're talking about the language, the target language and or culture, which is a big, long thing. Locale is short. <coughs> the message is, when you're localizing, you don't think like that, which would be the way equivalence would work. Source text, target text, and an ideal two-way relationship between them. You're thinking like this. Source text goes into many target texts at the same time. Simultaneous shipment, you know, a product release is released at more or less the same time in many different languages. You get synergies of marketing, you make more money. Uh, so the translation is done at the same time or the localization is done at the same time. And increasingly, it's like this, we're working from the internationalized text or version into the various target texts at the same time. The source has disappeared. 
if you're, okay, look at the software you're using. What was the original word? You know, or the original office? So it, the source is no longer there. It's the source is or a website. It's, it's not a source. It's the most recent update in the sequence of objects. In this world, a lot of the work is going to people who work on controlled writing, which is obviously internationalization. Solve the problems before they appear. Get rid of the bad punctuation, as we discovered in class the other day, or get rid of the, uh, the difficult uh, syntactic constructions. Terminology becomes incredibly important because that's another feature of controlled writing, of controlled internationalization. The glossaries as well. The building up of memories that are reliable. And I've put down integration of machine translation from reliable databases. And project writing. All of those things are tasks for which expertise is much in demand. I w I've got just a few minutes left. I want to emphasize that globalization is commonly misunderstood as everybody doing the same thing, as sameness, as the American culture spreading all over the world. In theory, it is not that. Uh, for this reason, people want to sell products, and products sell locally. Products sell locally. People who sell know that. So, uh, Microsoft, which is uh, supposed to be dominating the computers of the world, if you look at it, wants to localize not just into many, many languages, but into many varieties of language. I think I counted 26 versions of Spanish and some 20 of English. They are interested in becoming local. It's a marketing strategy. You can, through this localization within globalization, maintain or enhance linguistic diversity. As long as people are doing this and, and selling their products locally and wanting to do it, you are resisting the global movement towards English. You are enhancing uh, the survival of linguistic diversity. At the same time, though, you're still using Microsoft, and you're still within a technological computer-using culture. And that use of localization, the enhancing of the local variety, positions consumers in, in places where they can only consume. If I give you a product that's always in your local language, the one thing I do is tell you not to use the language of the center, not to move to a position where you will produce products of your own. You stay there in your language and your culture and consume. Too often we think all translation is good. You can't have enough translation in the world. If there were more translation, more interpreting, the world would be much better. When I look at the way localization is operating in the configuration of world cultures, I have some doubts. A lot of localization, because it aims to keep people in locales, may be a restriction on freedom and maintenance of asymmetries and basic economic justice.